welcome guys to the MMOs.com podcast. Episode 121 here. Altai joining you this week by with the one, the only. Omer. There it is. And before we go to the weekly raid, I'm going to shake things up a little bit because we're going to change the format of Spidgen because I want to I want to test your skills on the human benchmark test. All right. I think uh, Zim, one of our buddies on the Mozak on Discord, shared us this link earlier. And I feel like it's a really cool link. And I would actually love to see how people score on, uh, on, on, on the chat over here. And we can see how everyone scores. So uh, if you guys haven't heard of this, you basically can uh, test your reflexes to see your, uh, your reaction time. Simply by clicking on uh, clicking the mouse when you see the screen turning green, I thought it was really cool because I, I showed it to a bunch of my friends and we were able to see like it, it almost correlated with like how like your friends that are good at video games oh, have God. much faster reaction speed. There we speed. go. And the ones that weren't as good, it very clearly seen over here. So go ahead and run it, and it'll, you'll get a score after five, and then we'll see what the score is. All right. I just poured myself a co uh, coffee. I haven't had a chance to drink it much yet, but here we go, boys. All right, on the spot. All right. Oh. My score is awful right now because uh, because we're we're doing it live. It's not good. All right, two oh nine, good. I'll take it. Two oh nine. It's like it's like a mini game of reaction speed. I got two forty four this time, but I, I I've done this test uh, every time I've done it. I usually get around uh, two ten to two twenty five is my is my average. My average is two three eight right now. So All right, not bad. There we are, it's a boys. fun link. It's a fun link. It's one of the most like this is like whoa, 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 it's it's fun. I'll leave it at that. Curious yeah. to see how everybody else does on our, on our on our chat over here. Well, that was yeah, exciting. That, yeah. All right. Take take it away. Let's let's go right back on schedule. All right. All right. Well, let's talk real quick about last week's raid. We discussed whether Fortnite was guilty of plagiarizing PUBG or not, and I believe. They were off the hook, right? Or were they on the hook? I've got to go back. Not guilty. Two. I think two to, the jury was uh, two for not guilty. So that means they are not guilty. The official MMOs.com jury has spoken. Uh, there it is. Any they thoughts on totally that? They were totally guilty, though. They were totally oh, guilty. Oh, no, it. no. They, they were not. Everyone copies each other, so let them get away with it. It's, it nothing's going to happen. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know... The blue hole guys have been bitching a lot on Twitter and complaining about it, but nothing's gonna happen. There's no legal recourse. You got to deal with it. So nothing's gonna change. But it's it's definitely a bit of a definitely a bit of a, a copycat. But that's okay. Uh, I'm already I'm, I'm, I'm uh, ruling against the jury here, which is illegal. So. We'll go we'll go for a retrial. All right. I feel oh, like God. the the jury was misled. The jury was the jury was hung. They're all dead. Now we need hung. a new jury. That's what happens. Hung, huh? They're hung. Hung jury, boys. All right. Well, let's see how we're doing here. So this week's weekly raid, I was actually inspired by uh, Mr. Chaos Shield. And like uh, last week, if, if you guys have an opinion on this or want to contribute, you can join in. And here is the weekly raid. What was your... Okay. It's, it's about exploits and bugs in MMOs, okay? So specific, I worded it a little differently than like uh, what I want to talk about, but this is part of it. What is your favorite MMO bug or exploit? What is your experience with bugs and exploits? And such and so forth. So, bugs have been there forever in gaming. Uh, I'm sure in single player games, there's a whole bunch of them. But when they're in online games, it's a whole different dimension because there's other players involved now. So, as part of this thing, do you have a moral problem with using a known bug or exploit knowingly in an online game? Okay. And more importantly, if you have a good story, I want to hear it. So, Omar, I'll let you start. What was your favorite story of you using a bug? Okay. In MMO. Okay. I got a few. I think we're gonna. Have, I think we have the same one. So you know, I'm gonna drop mine, and you can give me yours afterwards. But I'm pretty sure we had the similar experience. But um, okay. In, in Ultima Online, again, this is our first MMORPG, so I have a lot of stories from Ultima Online. But in my, you know, my first MMORPG, uh, you know, the way it worked was, in town there was NPCs that would sell various. You know, you, there's a jewelry merchant that sells jewels. There's a there's a a tailor that sells clothing. A butcher that sells meat. And there was you know in town, there was a the, 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 the merchants that sell shoes and clothing, once in a while they would spawn with very rare sandals. They were black sandals. These were like, you could not get any sandals that were th this black color. It was like this perfectly black sandal. And the only way to obtain it was from this NPC in town. But the problem was, the, if you attack an NPC in town, the guards would literally instantly kill you. 
So if you flag as a criminal in town by attacking or committing a crime, a lightning bolt would fall from the sky and a, the guards would literally one-shot you. There was no way around the one-shot. So the only way that players could actually get these sandals were through an exploit or a bug, even though it didn't really feel like a bug because it's kind of using the game mechanics, but not as intended. So what we, what my brother and I did was we would actually, um, we would actually lure a bunch of bulls, just basically uh, monsters that weren't really monsters, animals, right? Animals, and they're, they're yeah. animals that neutral. are strong enough, neutral. They're basically neutral characters, and they weren't. Bulls are pretty strong. If you brought like a cow into town, it wouldn't work. So we had to only work with a bull. So we would bring a bull into town, where these uh, where these NPCs were with these black sandals, and things did. And, and, and then when once the, the bull and the NPC were next to each other, there was a skill in the game called provocation. You could provoke the bull to attack an NPC or an enemy or a monster or anything you want. And of course, doing this would would flag you as a criminal and you get instantly one shot. But the thing is, after if your provocation was successful, even though you're one shot and you're dead, the bull would actually fight the NPC. And the bull was strong enough to kill the NPC. Now, this could only work with a handful of, monst- with a handful of creatures in the game, and bulls were one of them. If you tried the same exact strategy with a, with a deer or a chicken, it wouldn't work. But it worked really well with bulls. So we would just sit there for hours and hours at a time, just provoking these goddamn bulls to kill bears. these tailors. And bears. And bears. Bears worked as well. We did this nonstop because you would have to kill so many merch NPCs to get the black sandals because they don't spawn with the black sandals every single time. They spawn with a random color sandal. And the black one is the rare one because you can't get that sandal any other way. So we would just do this all day. And then eventually we got suspended for doing it because it's you're not allowed to – you can't do it. Apparently it was considered an exploit. Yeah, but it didn't feel like an exploit. We made a shit ton of money doing this, though. And the funny thing is, they actually let, let us keep the money. I mean, they, we got a suspension, but we got to keep the money, so mm-hmm. that was nice. Uh, worth, yeah, so worth, it seemed like worth, pretty legit. Worth. Uh, I actually have a different one, uh, guys. So the one Omar just mentioned, I did mention it in the weekly raid, the Ultima Online exploit. We got suspended for. But my favorite one, just out of the sheer like fun factor of it, was you know Dark Age of Camelot. So when I played for a while on the PvP server, and they were there was a town called Tiranog. And I'll, I'll play a little video of like the entrance to town. This is the entrance to the town. It's like it's kind of like a tunnel. And there was an exploit where uh, you could be inside the wall. So you could be behind this wall and you would see right through it, right? But your but the other your target obviously couldn't. He wouldn't know where you are. Now they could still tab target you and hit you, but but you would have a huge surprise leap on them because they would have no idea what's going on. So I'm and I and like maybe some party members would sit behind this wall waiting for and people feel safe when they're almost in town, you know? So they would tr- then they're going to town and then all of a sudden they just get nuked by everyone. Archers, mages and stuff. Uh that was good times. And uh we and you got experience in this game for killing people. So what oftentimes what we would do is we would target high level players, players higher level than us with this, because they wouldn't know what's going on and we could get to jump and you know level up from them. Good and actually I think Dark Age Camel was one of the only MRPGs with world PvP. Where killing other players reward you with experience. And it was actually a really cool system. Like, no other MRPG has done that. Because you usually get some kind of honor points in WoW or some other bullshit that doesn't mean anything, right? But in Dark Age of Camelot, you kill, a, like, if you level like 40, the guy's level 45, and you kill a player like five levels higher than you, you gain like, like, like th- four hours worth of experience in one shot. Because this guy was higher level than you, it's a PvP kill. It's worth a shit ton. Like, it was, it was amazing. So you really rewarded you for killing higher level players. Like you could grind to level up or kill other players to level up. And they got around like the obvious exploits of like and cheating mechanics. Like if a certain if, if a player dies, they're not worth experience for another, like four hours. They're only worth experience that first time they die. So you can't farm off your friends. And the obvious ways to kind of game the system didn't work. But I thought it was a really neat system. And you know, we played a shit ton of Dark Age Camel on the PB server. And that was I, I absolutely loved it. Nothing else came close to like offering you actual ways to level up your character. Strictly through like world PvP in such an innovative way. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to hear your stories, guys, in the comments on your favorite exploits or experiences. But Omar, in the meantime, where do you stand on the morality of this issue? So, uh, when you were doing what you were doing, I know you got we got suspended. So obviously, like that's bad. But like, did you feel wrong? Should you feel wrong for using bugs in games like this? Uh, what what how, where do you stand? Yeah, I, I, I might sound a bit like a hypocrite, but I'm gonna say no because. Wait, oh, no. Obviously, it depends. So on... that's, that's the answer to the question. Is it moral? That's a, that's a deep question. Is it or is moral? it immoral? Mm. Are you, you feel like you're cheating? That's... Like you should be punished? It's not the same thing as cheating. It's not the same thing. And, okay. And, and it depends on the level of exploit. Okay. Like the exploit or bug that we describe that you described the Dark Age of Camelot when you're hiding behind that wall, right? 
I wouldn't say that's not the same thing as maybe using an exploit to like insta kill somebody. You know, like you find the bug. Like there was a, there was an exploit in, in Heroes of New Earth where if you were playing uh, their axe rock knockoff, I forgot what he's called. If you like spam three buttons at once, you one shot somebody. And I remember abusing that, and it was literally I felt bad doing it, but I did it anyway because I'm a dick. But like I remember distinctly feeling bad about that. I can say, okay, oh, that's a bit immoral. There's clearly something sketchy going on over there. However, in Dark Age of Camelot, I I didn't see a problem sitting behind that wall, fucking people up. And I didn't see any, I didn't have any moral, I, I slept soundly, despite provoking a bunch of bulls to kill a bunch of NPCs in town. Like, I, I didn't feel like I was hurting anybody. So it depends on the exploit, because certain exploits I do think can really ruin the experience for a lot of people in, in a very unfair way. Bit of a bit of a half-assed answer, but it, it depends on the exploit or the bug. And I want to make a clear distinction for, if anyone watching is confused, between an in-game bug or exploit versus a third party like a hacking tool or something. And we're talking specifically about what's in the game, uh, not you know outside third party stuff. And with that said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with using a bug uh, than playing the game normally, because it's in the game. You didn't make you know you didn't you didn't you didn't break the game. That's just part of the game, you know. So if you find uh, like if somebody does, finds a dupe exploit in a game by shuffling around some like. You know, he shuffles around some items in his inventory. Yeah. He, he loads three times in this one specific map. I feel and he dupes no, items. Okay, I have no problem with that. I, I, you don't think no that moral can problem, negatively like, impact the game? Uh, well, that, no, that's, if, someone, if someone kills me in, uh, you know, in, in League of Legends, if someone beats me on lane, that is a negative impact on my game. But I don't think it should be, disqual you know, it's not a moral issue. You know, just because just I negatively impact someone else's game doesn't mean it's a, a moral issue. That's a, you know, what, about, what, 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 what about this? <laughs> What about this for moral issue then? Let's say uh, when you kill somebody in, in Dark Age of Camelot, in, 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 in any MMORPG, let's say after you kill them, if you like, t if you click their corpse and type X, Y, Z, Z, whatever, some, some string of letters, the character gets permanently deleted. Okay. And you do that. You want to feel bad about that? No. Why? I mean, if, if the devs want to recompensate that guy or fix that bug later, sure. But if, if, it's, if it's allowed in the... It's, here's, here's the thing. If it's allowed in the game... It's, it's not that it was allowed. It was unintentional. Okay. Well, that's and, but, so, so. You wouldn't feel bad about no. deleting the guy's character. No. Well, first and, of all, and, and you know, it, it's a hard delete. It deletes from the back. It deletes all the databases, backups too. No, it's too hypothetical because there's no hard delete. Like, they can always restore. You know, it's it's fine. It's not. It's no, not like they you, don't have backups sometimes. God. Remember, what, apparently Blizzard has no backups of vanilla 1.0, so they can't they can't do a vanilla they're, service. They're, they no they're, backups, they're lying. They're lying about that. But anyway, yeah, I think we're straying a little far. Um, here's another one. Here's what what I always find interesting is how long some bugs can stay in a game. I mean, there are some bugs that basically become features of a game. And an uh, example I'd like to return to is Smash Brothers. Uh, I know it's a local multiplayer game, Melee, but wave dashing was initially a bug. It was not a feat. You know, the the guys who made it did not notice it. Okay, it came out you know many years later. But uh, I I would argue that that ma made Melee special compared to other games in the in the Smash Brothers series because it allows so much more you know fluid movement and higher level play. So sometimes bug, uh, gu guns, people are mentioning guns, the whole K style, what, whatever it's called. Uh, K style, yeah. Yeah, that was a bug, basically. Uh, it became a part of the game. So yeah, there's a lot of good examples. Guns, I would argue, is a is a multiplayer game. Not not quite an MMO or RPG or anything, but uh, the, the, you know, obviously that style of gameplay is re basically required playing at a high level in guns. Yeah, but again, you have to you have to realize that like bugs like that yeah. are not the same as you know potential oh. game ruining exploits. Whoa, 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 wait. Really. Hmm. That, that that's just drawing a line. What you think is fun or not? If somebody is wave dashing against you, I, I would argue you would think that's game breaking. Because imagine you played melee for like ten years normally, and you play against someone who else has played for ten years, but he's wave dashing. You got no chance. It's not the same thing as as in an MMORPG finding dupes or again maybe potentially deleting characters somehow. Stuff like that is is literally game breaking. Whereas. Doing wave dashing is giving you such a minor advantage. The, the, the degrees matter. Okay. Oh. Let's take your hypothetical to the extreme. Let's say you let's say uh, you find an exploit that if you type a certain string of characters, the whole game server crashes. Everyone's character gets deleted. Hold up, hold up. You you don't think that, that there's something wrong with you I, doing I, that? I don't like your hypotheticals because it's, why? I have I have no experience of a bug like this where like you permanently delete someone's database. Well, the, the whole point is I take your idea to the extreme. No, you take it to the, the principle. You no, you if take the principle you, doesn't apply no, to the extreme. You take it to the, the stupid. The I'll give you no. a better example. Okay, the the economic bugs in games. So Neverwinter, for example, had this economic bug where you could bid negative amounts and get money. That, I thought that I, I'm okay with that too, as long as they fix it eventually. It's, it's up to developers to fix it. But in the meantime, if I'm exploiting it and getting uh, all this money, 
I, I'm not really taking away anyone's, you know, uh... Here's the thing, if, even if I dupe a billion gold, right? I'm not, like, stopping you from enjoying the game the way you want. So that's a fair one. It's... You gotta give me an example. I'm not gonna buy this. I'm taking it to the extreme. Oh, what, what if I, what if I, what if I just bug him, all right? And I exploit it, yeah. and it flashes your monitor the certain colors that I know will kill you with a seizure. Like it's, it's, it's a stupid example to say something like that. <laughs> like, no, like, fine. Let, it could let, happen. Let's say, let, let, let's say in a game of let, let, fine. Let's say in a game of League or a game of CS:GO or any competitive game, you uh, you, you shuffle some items around and, and you you hard drop everyone from the game. They all disconnect. You, you don't think that's that's a form of cheating? No, uh, no. I, 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 I'll be okay with that too, because obviously at that point the devs would fix it fast, right? Well, the, well, they will fix it eventually, yeah. But like, you don't, you don't feel wrong, you don't feel no. bad about that. Like, you no. just kind of like scumbagged your way to winning that game. No. Why not? I'm using the available tools. Th th those are not the intended tools. Whoa! And you will get banned for that. Th I, I think. Oh, well, that's a separate issue. But the thing is, look, you have to find the the, the creativity. And uh, like fun for me in a game is playing it the way it's not meant to be played. I think the most boring thing in a game is to is to like play it the way it's supposed to be played. Like picking a hero, going down mid lane, less hitting, you know, harassing the guy three times you when he moves up. Yeah, it's you it's describing it's meta. You don't have to play meta, but you don't you don't have to break the game. Or uh, uh, Canaris and Cash should make a good point too. When you do a billion gold, you ruin the game's economy, which literally affects everyone else that plays that game. What? Like, whoa, whoa, when, Ruff, you, whoa, whoa, every winter when, when you, Rockefeller when you those astral diamonds. Look, when Rocke mm -hmm. when J.D. Rockefeller invented a, a new way to synthesize oil, he ruined the economy for lots of people who were making no, oil. No, he didn't dupe oil. He found a new way of digging oil uh, out of the ground. Well, that's, that's basically like creating oil, Re Refining, yeah. So basically duped the resources in a way no, that... he didn't dupe it. He, you're literally cr duping. You're, you're duplicating. He created a new resource. Creating matter from nothing. Okay, yeah. It's uh, the same thing. It is. The first guy, when we first learned about oil, it was useless for, at first, right? Then we realized you could put it in engines, right? And like do all yeah. the shit with it. So that sure. he brought something from nothing, basically. No, but but, you, but see, you use the word basically, but no, he didn't. That we had we had kerosene, it was just very expensive. Okay. And you also get it from from. Uh, so he from changed the economic rubber. dynamics of it. That's my point. Sure. So but, to me, that's that, like a bug. It's not the same thing as it, it it's not the same thing as duping, where you it you, is. you literally create infinite amounts of it. Not infinite. But no, you can't. In Neverwinter, the the kind of completely shut down very quickly because. First of all, the Neverwinter exploit that we were talking about is when Neverwinter first launched the the, the D and D MMORPG from Arc slash Perfect World, players could bid negative amounts in the game's auction house. Mm -hmm. So people go to the auction house and they bid negative one million, and for some reason the game let you do that, and you would you would lose the auction and you get refunded a million million uh, diamonds Good. in the game. Good. So people people were just bidding negative. That's like day trading. Amounts. That's like Wall Street day trading, no, making a billion dollars. You know, like they're pushing. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. No, no. So they, is that they hacking? Oh, is that hacking? Really, completely shit out of the game's economy. Okay. The game actually had a really nice balance between like premium currency and regular currency with the exchange between players. And after that happened, it became a disaster. Fucking, it was impossible for free players to get diamonds because the inflation ratio went through the roof, and the game went completely fucked since then. And you obviously negatively impact the community. Nope. Anyone who plays the game is negatively impacted at that point because you can't just say, "Oh, the developers well, could fix it." Well, well they what? can. What is this negatively impacted? I, I, if someone beats me in lane in League of Legends, I'm negatively impacted. Well, well, I, no, I don't understand what that means. Like, what, what, why you is... fuck over everyone else. Look, 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 look. I want to return to my... I want to return to my Rockefeller example because some people are saying, well, he's created... I'm not saying he created the matter out of nothing. Imagine you have a rock, like in Minecraft, okay? Versus a rock in real life, like this giant aluminum ore or whatever, okay? If you could turn that into more value because of ingenuity, or in this case, exploiting a bug, that's that's power. That, that's that's legit. Well, uh, that's fine. Like imagine you make a, you, imagine you got an iron you're ore. You're doing that within the rules. The rules. The rules are important. The rules of the society you live in, right? Yeah. You live in the United States. We make progress by US breaking those laws. rules. No. No, you, you didn't break those rules, and you and you and you, you, you do something nice. If you, but if you break the rules in America, and you're process of creating a new way to extract oil, you go to fucking jail. So in, in, Uber, how, many, rule, how many laws did Uber? Rules, you go to fucking jail. How get, many laws did Uber break with the, the taxi cab or chauffeuring? Whatever, whatever, Come on, and and they pay for it in, in in various countries. But the point is, your example is bullshit because again, they exist within the rules of the United States, just like the Neverwinter exists within the rules of, rules of their own terms of service, and mm -hmm. obviously negatively impacting the whole community and fucking everything up is considered a bannable offense. Is a problem. And, I, and I, call actually, I call it entrepreneurship. I call it entrepreneurship, baby. 
Okay. Yeah, gotta, this is a skirt, good point too. Let's say skirt the line. It, it's why we aren't allowed to print money. Okay. Let's say you make a device. Let's say you can counterfeit stuff in your house today. Okay. You 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 get a really nice printer. You bought the top of the line HP Gadget printer, and you got your custom software for it, and you can you can print almost perfect hundred dollar bills. Yeah. Do you not feel morally wrong to fucking scam people with that money? If what no. You don't feel so, so okay. If you, so you you have no moral problem with counterfeiting money. I'll give you a good example. No more. We both did this. Uh, selling pirated software to like you know when we were in high school like games like we we wouldn't we yeah, buy yeah, these yeah the, we told them it was pirated if we ever oh, okay that. sure the, the, uh, yeah that's a different story and that's right now we know, who, nobody bought pirates did we sold Steam accounts and we we got those Steam keys from eBay which is different no the R four remember that the, the Game Boy shit like we'd get these R fours and I, I would yeah, sell we, them to we we, were, we know we would resell the Nintendo DS cart R four cartridges okay they yeah, were, but we, they were no. a legal product but we would and load we them with ROMs we did I I don't know if I, I should don't admit I don't know if I should admit this right now. But <laughs> so we definitely modded shit and sold that shit, okay? So, uh, all right, but, so you, you personally have no moral qualms with counterfe- counterfeiting dollars. I have a moral qualm if I don't tell them it's I'll t- I made it rather than the government because I'm lying then what? to an individual. But just you, printing you the money you made it like that implies you earned it. But you know that you could. Well, anyway. they, 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 they can take it out when they want as long as like, hey, I made these hundred dollar bills. Do you want them for ten dollars each? <laughs> okay, if they if they want to interpret that what? as me earning them through work, that's up to them. All right, th- th- this conversation is going nowhere, but I, 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 I think y- there's no way you're okay with counterfeiting money in real life. So, you know, the pr- same principle applies in games. You know, it's illegal in real life, and you go to jail oh, for doing illegal. it. Illegal. Oh, I hate that word in the games. In, in MMOs and online games, it's against the terms of service, and you get banned for it. But you would argue you shouldn't get banned for it. But it's a very logical reason why it happens. Part of the game, bro. Deal with it. It's not part of the game. It's, it's called. It's called being game. slick. All right. If you if you exploit. Bugs, you're slick. If you whine about it, you're you're like a fuddy duddy. That's it. All right. Well, let's let's maybe we get we you know maybe anybody has any good interesting stories about any exploits yeah, sure. they've done. Yeah, well, I, I'd love to hear your stories uh, about these kind of things. Yeah, we're opening the voice lines as well. If anyone wants to hop in for a brief moment to share a fun story about exploiting in online games or cheating or doing any kind of uh, bug, and maybe some fun stories out there. We got we got Etherville here. Let's drag him in again. Howdy, here, Etherville. Welcome to our fun discussion on bugs and exploits. Any good stories to share? Well, my example of a funny exploit happened several years ago in back in Planetside 2. Um, as some of you may know, Planetside 2 is an MMO FPS, and what essentially happened was after a major update patch, essentially SOE, as they were known back then, mm-hmm. made a huge made a huge screw up and broke a lot of elements of the game, specifically in regards to how the shields for each of the tree faction bases were, specifically the, the VS base. So what mm-hmm. ended up happening is that players could essentially enter enemy bases, but they couldn't really kill anyone in there, so it resulted in a huge disco party over there in conjunction with the fact <laughs> in conjunction with the fact that the update also broke the projectiles of the Vanu Sovereignty's faction. So their tank projectiles were ten times larger than they were. Holy hence shit. disco party. <laughs> That's a, that's a fun uh, exploit, yeah. a bug rather. And, and because they were in the enemy base, all the friendly fire was turned off, so it resulted in a lot of fun events and partying going on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wholesome bug right there, I gotta say. Nobody's hurt by that one. Friendly, wholesome <laughs> bug. It pretty, brings everyone together. No one's getting salty over that, okay? like pro- Things like that obviously don't warrant any kind of extreme measures of banning because there's no negative consequences to that. So uh, that's a fun bug. Yeah, that was a, a lot of the groups came together. There was a lot of aircraft racing inside. The only issue was outside and also caused some weird screen shaking issues, but that kind of promoted the funny party atmosphere and as well as the fun ta- tank stacking. They were able to hit the skybox, I think, once. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. That's a fun bug. Oh, man. Anyone else want to share a fun story? Hop into our MMOs.com Discord and I will drag you in. I know... Uh... I know we're going to remember so many good ones after the podcast, you know, because they're not coming to me now. But uh, I'm sure you all remember the Diablo 1 bug with the potion and duping. That was a good one. Oh, my God. That was a classic. And Diablo 1 had the most absurd system of... Uh, it wasn't I mean, it wasn't imp- intended, obviously. But for some reason, if you dropped a, a piece of gear and then, like, you walked over it, and at the same time you picked it up, you dropped the potion. It had to be, I think it had to be a, it had to be a red potion. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty If you sure. did that, I would actually dupe. And you would just literally just the dupes ran wild in that game. 
and they it kept was... it in, they kept it in the game for like ever like i i don't think they ever got rid of that like it it worked for a long time it's that was that was a fun bug and i remember and we, we share the quick story one more time real quick but uh when when we first started playing online like we asked some guy, yo, can you help us out? Like, we just started playing, right? He's like, oh, no problem, bro. I'll give you this really cool piece of armor, right? So he takes off his chest piece. So he's a high-level player. He's got a really good piece of gear. He takes off the one he has on. He's like, yo, and he drops on the floor. And the second he drops on the floor, I pick it back up. I pick it up. So I took his gear. He's like, dude, give me that back. I'm going to dupe it so you can have one, too. I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't believe this guy. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to keep yours. He's like, what the fuck, dude? I was going to give you a free one. He just took mine. I was going to dupe that shit for you. So, like, that guy ended up losing his item because he didn't have a copy, like an extra copy on him. Because why would he? Why would he keep an extra copy of gear on him? So we ended up taking the gear he was going to do for us because for it to work, you had to actually drop the item on the ground. But yeah, we, we fucked that guy over. I feel Felt like there's good. so many good stories with bugs because I think intuitively, we as people, we enjoy the stories where things are not normal. Like they're exceptional. So the stories where you kind of break the rules, I think these are the memorable ones. And I think so many games today are just. They limit, they're limiting our chance to have those moments. And here's another good one. I'll, I'll tell you guys a StarCraft bug I used. So our father is like 60-something, and he, he has been playing StarCraft for almost as long as we have. StarCraft 1. So, and he, obviously he's an old guy, so he's really slow, and we always beat him. So I always kind of give, I give him handicaps. Like, I won't build this unit, I won't build that unit, you know? And it got to a point where I said, listen, Dad, I'm going to beat you in StarCraft. With a no rush, 40 minutes, I can only make Zerglings and, and Overlords, Okay. And he said, no way, I'll beat you. So we played the map, and it was one of those maps where there's only one way out of your main base, okay? It was Big Game Hunters, BGH. And I wasn't allowed to leave my first base for 40 minutes. That's another thing. So he basically walled me in with cannons, and, you know, started building carriers. And he thought, okay, I have him. There's no way he can beat me because he's stuck in his base, and it was just circlings. My cannons will kill him. So, you know, I did. I, uh, I went to the short edge where the water was. I burrowed a drone. I, I put a whole bunch of my circlings on top of the drone. And then I unburrowed the drone. And there was a bug where the drone, it couldn't find a place to unburrow. And it would just literally float across the ocean to the next, you know, mineral patch. So then I built another base there. And he never walled there off because he, he didn't think I would ever get there because there was no way I could. Uh, so I built a whole base over there. And then, like, you know, when 40 minutes were up, I had 200 Zerglings rush into his base and kill everything while his carriers were trying to, like, kill me. But I killed all his buildings and I won. Yes. <laughs> Got him. We have another uh, story from Dreamland, and this time about Arcade. Let's drag him in. What's up, Dreamland? Let's hear that. Let's hear the Arcade story. <laughs> Alrighty. So, do you guys did you guys play Arcade much? Ah, uh, very little. No, just a, just a bit. <laughs> so, basically, I I played it kind of in the early like beta, not alpha. Um, mm -hmm. And so there was this mission where you used a wagon to harvest cotton on a farm, and you can drive mm -hmm. the wagon around. And that was basically one of the only few mounts in the game at the time. There was like one other uh, wagon with a kind of similar design. And that was basically it. And so my friend and I were doing this mission. And uh, the entire area is gated off with a fence. And you have to hop over the fence to get in there. And so we figured out on accident, basically, by if you drive the wagon into the fence and then have somebody else ram behind you, pushing you, you can eventually get the wagon out of the, out of bounds for the quest and just <laughs> joy joy ride with it, <laughs> and so it's, it's pretty wholesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't amazing, but it was just satisfying to kind of break the game in that way. And so, so <laughs> <laughs> um, and so basically, we uh, joy rode this wagon throughout the world for I'm not even kidding two hours. My friend has a YouTube video. <laughs> I was shit. driving for two hours, and the fun part was just driving it through enemy territory. And normally, you get killed on sight when you're in the other faction's territory. Mm -hmm. But they saw us on this wagon, and they were just so amused that all the enemy factions would just like join us and start dancing on the wagon when we drive around. <laughs> but that was my kind of wholesome glitch story. But it was pretty fun. That's awesome. I imagine all the reactions you get from people that see, like, "What the fuck? How how is he doing this?" So that was the only place you could basically be in that vehicle though right that fenced off yeah. area right yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool yeah it's just a small little town on our faction that you can do the quest and we just squeezed it out of the fence and drove it around that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah post a video in the in the discord chat and rather the the twitch chat because that sounds pretty cool all right i will uh, thanks uh, for 
Yeah, right? Thanks for sharing the awesome story. Yeah, a lot, a lot of wholesome, wholesome bug users here. That warms your heart. <laughs> That's awesome. I like it. And, and, and look, bugs like that, for example, I don't think warrant any kind of bans. There's no harm done. It's all fun, right? Like those, those are wholesome bugs, and they're not negatively impacting <sighs> the game. Let's let, let listen. Let's say you find a bug that literally lets you steal money from other people. Like that, yeah. you shouldn't be allowed to get. Why not, like, man? You know, there's no open PvP. There's no way to take somebody else's money. That's you find interesting. A glitch, so you can just literally just take all their gear. Hold up. Okay. Imagine. That's not interesting. You just imagine. Imagine. Imagine, life. imagine we're two cavemen leaders. Okay. We got like our, our wooden clubs, and then we go. Sure. We're, we're having one of our fights or one of our wars. Okay. And then all of a sudden, during one of our wars, my guys show up with swords, like like iron swords, and then you say, "Hey, that's not fair. You're cheating." That's that's part of that's part of the progress. That's no, like what. Like, how, you, how are these two things if, so, if somebody has I'm a way of mining, if somebody has a way of mining like ten times the ore as you do using a bug, okay, that's ingenuity. That's that's progress. That's entrepreneurship. Like, like I don't understand why no, that that's literally breaking like, the you're, game. Oh, your negative effect in my experience. Why is he shooting you from across the screen? No, he's playing the game. Like, what, you, you know what you should do? You should say you should be like, ah, oh, wow, that guy's smart. You know, look, he, you know, look what he did. He's what, what a what a no, clever that, guy. But, but but why shouldn't that guy get banned? Oh. I need to get suspended because because he's not using a third party exploit. It's in the game. He's just he's finding out. It's like somewhere. Will we ever have like a fusion reactor? Maybe right. It, it might be in the laws of physics. So in the game, if that bug is in the game, it's in the laws of physics of that world. So if you can yes. discover if you can discover it, it's quite it, literally a bug, an unintended consequence of doing certain actions in that game. Yes, it's, it's in there. Okay, so discovering it is like an act of discovery of like trigonometry or or, or calculus or like. Or like a, a, the steam engine. It's like a. It's like discovering it's the, rule. the rules of the game to abuse it, to use those to your advantage. They specifically say. Who knows if it's unintended? Right Who knows if it's unintended? Oh, the, all right, look, if you look, listen, <laughs> it's science. If, if, <laughs> look, <laughs> the point is, if you do it by accident, I don't think anyone's gonna say you, you should get banned. The thing is, when you abuse it, when you specifically use it against somebody else, knowing full well what it does, nobody's saying you should get banned for doing something by accident. Hundred percent, you should get banned if you're if you're intentionally using it. Hold up, so, so to a disadvantage. the fountain hook is a good example in Dota Two, Mar. I know you played this, so it's a good example. If Pudge hooks someone, he pulls somebody towards him with the hook, right? But if Pudge shoots a hook, and then somebody teleports him, the Pudge character, okay, and his ally teleports him somewhere, right, on a, on other other side of the map, the target that Pudge hooked will actually come with him all the way to the other side of the map. So there was a there was an attempt at one point. For people to time it properly, where you would take the enemy hero that you hooked, and you would get him teleported to your fountain, where he would instantly, almost instantly die, just like in League of Legends. Now, obviously, the guys who made the game weren't thinking about this, right? Where Pudge's hook would take him from, you know, the middle of the map to your base, but they allowed it. It worked. It was fun. It was hilarious to watch. It was it was amazing. Again, I think it's on a game-to-game -game basis, and obviously, certain mechanics are sanctioned. I'm sure, and very quickly after that, that was discovered. People asked on their forums if that was okay or not, and clearly it was because it's. I don't think it's been fixed to this day. But I, I don't think if, if you find a bug that literally lets you one shot somebody again, like in you know, Heroes of New Earth, the axe hero, uh, the axe equivalent of, of you know that hero in Han could literally like one shot people with his. Uh, he would like charge somebody, and then if you do it like three times, it, it, it's a usability three times, which is breaks the game, and, and you need to kill them. What? Why is that, that breaking? Oh, why is that breaking the game? Okay, if it, look. I agree that if, if it's something is not fun for the mass of players, it should be fixed by the developer. That's their job, right? But whether it should be fixed or not, this whole like it hurts somebody else is not like a fair reason to be against a bug. Like everything hurts somebody else. Like, like if someone if someone beats me, if, no, if, I, if you follow the the mechanics and the rules of the game. Just because you beat somebody, that, that, that's within Hold the up. realm of fair play. Okay. These oh. rules are fair play. They're, Hold they're determined up. in the game's rules. Okay, you're playing Pudge, right? I'm playing mid against you in Dota, okay? You beat sure. me. In mid, you beat me, okay? Versus you teleport me back to base and kill me. You beat me both ways. What does it matter to me? I don't understand. Like, I still lost. Like, they're both me losing and being sad. Like, Okay, now a third option. Ready? You beat, or, or, or you, I'm level one. You come to the lane. You just die instantly. You don't even know why. I dropped the arrow branch in four through two locations, picked it up in a funny order. You just died. Okay. What's the difference? Oh, you, it's lost, a, you lost well, either now through it's, skill, through bugs, or through bullshit. No, now it's, it's a, all the now, same, right? You now it's lost. a poorly made game. It's a developer's fault. They all fixed that. You know, like that's, so, so, so what, does it, what does it matter to you as the player? If it's it not, if it's not a fun lost, game, right? I'll, I won't play it. I don't know. Like, what do you want me to say? But I, the point is not the same. You have to play by the rules of the game. I, I feel like you're shifting. The rules of the game exist. You know, 
you know, because you, you, they can't, they can't look at every variable, or every bug. These are impossible to find all of them. So you know who they tells say if you find bugs, you're not supposed to use them. You know who or tells you? Them, you know who you tells you? You got to play by the rules of the game. All right, your what? employer, your teacher. All right, all the people trying to your, keep you your down. Parents. Yeah, yeah. All right, you know who doesn't play by the rules of the game? Elon Musk. You know where he wants to go? A little planet called Mars. All right, and you don't get to Mars by playing by the rules. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All that's right. sure that's related, but I think I think we'll have to agree to disagree on this one. But look, there are a lot of fun, innocent bugs out there for for all all sorts of online games. So if you have any fun stories, definitely share them on uh, with us on mmos.com as well. It'll you know, oh. drop the link on there as well. But you know, it's we heard some good stories today. And I'm sure we'll get some some more uh, some more uh, memories. I mean, after we end the podcast, for sure, we'll think of some more fun bugs. But it's definitely some good stories in there. You know, Strife. If I knew what Aaron was on about, I would. I tell you. He's a wizard. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right, maybe we should get to the the next topic this week, which is probably the, the most fun topic and kind of ties in together with our discussion about toxicity from, I think, two weeks ago. So uh, this is, this is I think, just pretty hilarious. It was a story about uh, League of Legends and uh, their lead experience designer was a bit toxic. You've heard of this. Why don't you walk us through, through this one? Okay, so apparently a Riot uh, developer on, not in the game, but in a Discord channel, I believe, for for mm-hmm. League of Legends, he made a statement about Tyler1, who is a very famous personality. A, a player that I personally admire for his um, for his free speech advocacy. <laughs> oh, is that what we're calling it now? Yes, and I want to read quickly what he said. Uh, he was asked about whether Tyler 1 should be unbanned and all the rest. And uh, it's a free Tyler 1 to make 100k plus a year on being a dick in game he didn't make. Okay, so apparently he made some money in the game, so this guy's sad about that. I don't know why. He's streaming, yeah. He looks like a damn homoculus. <laughs> that, that is the money shot. What the hell? <laughs> what kind no, of... No, the money shot's coming up. That wasn't it. This, the oh, third one's the money all right, shot. All right, honestly, it's fine. He'll die from a coke overdose or testicular cancer from all the steroids. Then we'll be Gucci. Oh, boy. (laughs) You know how much bullshit he's caused me personally? And remember, this is a developer, uh, an employee of Riot making the statement. Their lead experience designer. Wow. (laughs) I I, I still think the homoculus... You know what? Here's the thing. If he left it at homoculus, he might have been... He might have, like... Got away he, scot-free. He'd be okay. He, he would have kept his job. He, yeah. lost, he lost his job for this, right? Uh, if he left the homunculus, I think maybe he'd be like a, a suspension, maybe like something, you know. But when he, when the testicular cancer bit and the steroids, that was that was a bit much. I think that, that's what cost him the job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so weird. Like, I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to... I like. Are, you, are, you, are you going to defend this guy? No, you, I'm def- you, you're, the, you're the toxic guy. You're okay with this shit. Look, I'm going to defend Tyler 1. What this guy... I mean, obviously, I think he has a right to say this, but, you know, Riot fired him. I don't care. But he seems so salty. Like, who who cares if Tyler1 made 100K streaming? Like, what does that have to do with the game or, like, you? I don't that Well, I, don't, I agree. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. So, it, the first statement is that he's he, he's speaking very personal. He's, like, jealous almost. Like, he's very personal. But I don't know. This this first sentence is... Bo- you know what? The first sentence bothers me more than the next two actual insults. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The, the, the first one is just silly. To bring up how much money the guy makes streaming has no bearing on, on anything, really. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously an interesting character, exciting, you know, you know, uh, interesting to watch. So uh, that's why he made the money. Sound well, like... first, or, f- first of all, hashtag free Tyler one. I-, I think that some of his streams and his league toxicity was some of the most hilarious shit I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, if you haven't seen some Tyler one toxicity, holy shit, this guy is gold. I-, I strongly recommend looking up some videos on YouTube on that. I think he-, he keeps up. A- he keeps like a. He used to keep a notepad document of like all the people that pissed him off, and he- in that notepad document, he'd be like, you know, like. Remote X or something like if this faggot is in my game, throw the run down mid every time and fucking feed like crazy. Or if this guy's in the game, fucking do this. You know, you just find different ways to ruin the game. And he just like he had this huge list and it was just hilarious. Obviously, that kind of behavior is going to get him banned, but he was one of the most entertaining streamers out there. I mean, he says he's reformed, he's reformed now. I don't know if he actually is or if that's a meme or not. He's been, I think he's been saying he's been reformed for a long time. I, I don't know, but uh, it's I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think Tyler One and I are like soulmates, guys. All right. Uh, yes, but, perfect. He he is your soulmate. Look, years ago during Dota One, okay, this was you know years before Tyler One was old enough to play games, okay. 
I'm the only one I knew at that time that did what he does. Where I, if if I played Dota one and like I felt like one of my teammates like you know let me down or something or to someone annoyed me, I would make a notepad mm-hmm. document where I would write their name, I would write down what they did because I would forget sometimes, and then what I would do if if I ever see them in a game like. If they are my ally, I would wait 30 minutes until the, I would play the game normally for 20 minutes, right? And then when they think we have when they think we're winning, I would just like steal their items or ruin the game. All right, I make them lose. Oh, I felt so good. All right. Well, <laughs> look at this guy's int list for example. I dropped you a link for it. So, show that on stream real quick. If you can maybe zoom in, uh, if you can see the it's kind of hard to see actually. Maybe I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a screen crack to capture it cuz you're not going to see it from there. Okay. It's a really bad quality, but you'll you'll see it in the picture hopefully. This is it's some real quality stuff, but like I, you never had an int list that was quite this, uh, quite like this. So like he wrote on that picture, uh, like J three disgusting animal kid who first times Lulu then cries because he can't mid. If found, shoot on sight. No, inbred I, fuck needs uh, to kill himself. No, that's just, right. yeah. No, t- son two dynamic Q trash can also known as lick dick with PE moon two v fifty kills if on team. Yeah. Zivom, if spotted, don't waste a second. Run down mid faster than you ever, ever have. Elo boosted gorilla who plays for KDA on Janna. Neck yourself. <laughs> oh, these, I, I, fuck, I think these hilarious though, honestly. Short, short and ace. Cancer troll, auto lock some support if forced anywhere but Jung. Refuse to change support even when given warning. Start inting immediately. Okay, so I agree with all these except for the first one. Like what, like what does that mean? Shoot him on sight. Yeah, you know, keep it in the game. You know, like keep keep. But neck yourself. But well, kill you. I, I, I like I neck yourself. It's a very classy way of saying kill yourself. Yeah, but I mean, you got to keep it in the game. You can't. You can't. You can't go after them outside the game. I, I, I <laughs> he has a pretty. He had a pretty lengthy intentional feed list, which I, I I thought was hilarious. He's a very entertaining guy, obviously, but I can see why they banned him. And the reason this guy is always brought up, and maybe that's why this guy said uh he mentions in the in the post that um he's caused me like how much time you know he's, he's cost me personally. Was because Riot has a policy to ban Tyler One every time they see him. He's permanently banned from the game. So if you make new accounts, if they find his accounts, they're going to ban him. So I guess this guy was in charge of you know maybe banning Tyler One's accounts and maybe it cost him a lot of time or something. And he was salty about that. That's the context behind I think uh, his his fourth point on that list. I mean, if you're getting paid to do that, what are you complaining about? Like, well. Yeah. It's Obviously, not like it's yeah. not like he's doing it at home on the weekends. He's doing it when he's in the office, you know. So uh, if anything, it's it's an easy job. I'd, I'd rather be on Tyler One Patrol than like coding coding or whatever, you know. Like yeah, Tyler One Patrol seems to be an easy way to make I, so I know. paid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to show you guys much respect to Tyler One for creating some some quality, entertaining content. Obviously, he's ruined a lot of games. I would never want. I I I I wouldn't want him on my team. But more impressively, like this guy was able to maintain like. Masters tier, Diamond 1, top 0.01%, despite literally intentionally throwing games. He's clearly an unbelievably skilled player. Unbelievably yeah. skilled. Yeah. Um, someone asked, did so, he get IP banned? No, he got worse than IP banned. He's like he's like DNA banned, all right? They don't care if they change <laughs> yeah, IP. You know, he, can make, he, can move, he can move to a different country you know, with a new computer, a new account, and they would still ban him just for being Tyler 1, not for breaking any rules with that new account, you know? So he's he's like hardcore DNA band. <laughs> oh, we got a Hopefully sub, Wacko. Thank you so much. Four months in a row, legit. Maybe the maybe the, you know look. Hopefully they'll overturn. You know, I got it. Maybe because of this their, this guy's mistreatment of Tyler One. Maybe Riot's gonna unban him as like a as a goodwill gesture because as like an apology because like their one of their employees literally went out of his out of their way to shit on him. So as like a an apology, they might unban him. Could be. Uh, I I want to share with you guys my favorite Tyler One moment. It's very wholesome, so no no swearing or anything. Here we go. Oh, let me find. All right. That. Turn this audio up here. That's forty seconds. Here we go, guys. Three, two, one. Crack, bitch. Did you know it's impossible to hold an egg in your palm and break it? Only, it's impossible. It's you can't do it. Nobody in the world can do it. Why you believe that? You have to be <laughs> I, I, I love this video. I've seen it God knows how many times. <laughs> I 
That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. <clears throat> uh, Tyler one, uh, free Tyler one. All right, uh, you know, there we go. I, I am, I am thoroughly on the free Tyler one train. Even though he's he's intentionally thrown lots of games, did some sketchy shit. He, the man's provided me a lot of entertainment. Unban him. Hundred percent unban him. Wow, I like how you're the one who's against toxicity, but you want to unban him. I'm okay, you know. This is, this I'm not against verbal toxicity. I'm against infeeding toxicity. There's a difference. Do you we've think? Been over that. Whoa, There's a difference. Do you think Tyler One is not infeeded? Oh no, he, he's infeeded okay. quite a few times. Actually. Okay. In fact, he's cheating himself in feeding. Like there's so many videos of Tyler One just intentionally throwing games. Yeah, you're a hypocrite. That's what you are. Look, ban him, and if he wants to level up an account again, I have at it. You know. All right. All right. Look. Apparently banning someone like look, banning accounts, I think is fine. We agree, you, we disagreed on that, but I think literally banning every account he ever makes without breaking any rules is, is kind of sketch. I mean, ban the guy for for breaking the rules, but he should be able to try again a new account. All right, uh, I mean, his new account. If he one mess up, gets into ban. You know. I I well, guys, I have some news for you. Many of you may not know this, but Omar's birthday is coming up. Uh, this week, oh, yeah. Friday, uh, October sixth is Mr. Remo Tay's birthday, and you know what? He has a very special birthday gift this this year. Uh, Lu you do Luna Online is coming to Steam on your birthday. I am the luckiest man alive. Yes, the best and more PG is launching on Steam on my birthday, guys. Exciting, isn't it? Oh yeah, I I guess I'm doing a birthday stream for uh, Luna Online. <laughs> Well, it is Friday. Oh, we could do uh, Grand Fest Friday for this instead of Guild Wars. Oof. Clearly. It's it's launching my birthday. We, it's, it's Luna Reborn, all right? Don't confuse that with regular Luna Online. It's the same game, but they've been reborn at the end. Even though it never really shut down. on There's been no super games for a while anyway. Uh, you know, I, Luna? Yeah. This looks like a, a better graphic version of life to me. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh... Mm, it's the shittier version of life. Maybe that's the word you're looking for. The graphics are better. I I'm, I don't know about the gameplay, but we will right, see. First of all, this is this is this is the best this this is the best music video I've ever seen for for Luna Online. I think we may have shown this video before in a very old podcast, but this is this is well worth showing off again. It is Luna Online related. I will unmute. Put this. the audio up there. The hard R real roll. This video is literally what the fuck. <laughs> is it time? What the fuck is this? <laughs> Burn it! What is this I feel in my pants? <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Enough of that. Enough of this nonsense. Right. But yeah, another old MRPG launching on Steam. I don't know. I just feel like, why are they? Who asked for this? Who was out there, like Super Games launch Luna Online on Steam? This is what the world needs. The world needs Luna Online on Steam. Said nobody ever. It's so weird that a lot of these. I I, I know why they're doing it because it costs them like nothing. There's like a, you pay a hundred dollar fee, whatever it costs of Steam Direct, and you get your game on there, and maybe they'll make some money off it. But I don't know. This game is. I don't think. I don't think more than a couple, a couple hundred people will ever even try this on Steam, and after that, it'll fall off very quickly. I mean, stupid games. I don't think they have a single popular game remaining, so it's doomed to fail. <laughs> Easy says he personally wrote a letter begging them to launch this game. <laughs> I think it's a bit of sarcasm there, but I like I like it. All right. More importantly, Omar, I'll let you cover the Final Fantasy uh, news. All right. We we had a few few Final Fantasy tidbits this week. Uh, m most interestingly, though, is um, Final Fantasy, th th there was an interview with uh, Yoshida. Uh, the producer of Final Fantasy XIV, and he actually uh, the headline over here is you know was that that Final Fantasy XIV could go free to play if 80 90 percent of players want it. I mean, obviously this is a very this is a hypothetical clearly, <clears throat> and I don't think the game is ever going to go free to play personally. But I mean, the fact that they didn't rule it out is kind of interesting. Maybe like in a like four or five years when maybe the player base declines, they might make it uh, go free to play. But in this interview on GamesIndustry.biz, they actually also said some. Um, they also said that the game has more active players now than ever before. It's it's at its peak, which is pretty cool. I mean, but they, they did just launch a new expansion. 
But you know, being at its peak is pretty pretty impressive. They they say they have over 10 million cumulative players, which we've mentioned before is kind of a bullshit metric. It's not active players; it's cumulative metric, uh, cumulative players. I hate that. And like, I, I hate that too because what's funny is GamesIndustry.biz used that 10 million number as if it was an active number. So they actually said, you know, 10, over 10 million players is really impressive because WoW only had 12 million at its peak. But they compared 12 million active subscribers for WoW to the 10 million cumulative players for for FF14 as if they were the same thing, but they're clearly not. But you know, as an active FF14 player, I'm I'm glad to see the game doing really well. You know, peak peak uh, active players right now too, and they actually said they they would consider raising the game's uh, free to play level cap as well because as of as of right now, you can play the game for free to level 35, and they said with the next expansion, whenever that launches, they might be comfortable raising that to 50 because the level cap will be raised with the next expansion as well. So free to play free to play users can still enjoy something in FF14, and maybe they'll enjoy a bit more when the expansion launches in the near future. I don't beyond that interview. That, yeah, go ahead. I don't know how I feel about this 80 90 percent thing. I feel like he's kind of like passing the buck. Like, how how does he? Is it going to be a poll or is he just pulling that out of his ass? No, it, there won't be a poll. It just if players essentially he's just saying if 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 players want it, we're going to do it. That's yeah. that's what he's trying to say. He's not like okay. he's not against it. Like some people would say, like, no, I'd rather burn the game down than make it free to play. You know, there, there's that mentality for some people. I really think they want to go free to play, but they're, they're not just thinking of the best way to do it. Really? You think this this is like they they intend on doing it now? They, yes. The internally, no I think internally they want to do it, and this is their why? way of kind of testing the waters. Wait, why why would they want to do it internally? They make so much money as a as a subscription based game. Well, they make more. Well, here's why. Um, I've heard you talking about people doing. You, first of all, you got to pay for server transfers in this game, right? Yes. And you cannot create characters on certain servers. So the only way the ones to play that are high up, yeah, high pipe pop, you can't create some characters out there. They're locked out. Yes, and things like race changes, gender changes yep. require uh, pretty substantial money. I would say probably more than one month. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think they realize, and cosmetics obviously that's probably cosmetics. I mm-hmm. think pe- I think oh, they, they realize they did a lot of cosmetics already. I think they realize that for every player they get that gets to like high level, the amount of money they make off the cosmetics, server change, you know, race change. Is more than um. No, but but here's the deal. I, in a lot of free-to-play games, you might be right. Like in Blade and Soul, when a costume costs like thirty bucks, Final Fantasy XIV's the the Mog Station items are actually they go on sale all the time. You can buy like a full outfit for like five ten five to ten dollars, like a full outfit. We get like six pieces of cosmetic gear. They're actually really fucking generous. You can get emotes for like two dollars. There's some really cheap items. Emote. The way they're priced, well, guys, I can I can get uh this smiley face for uh for five dollars, two dollars. No, what, no, what a deal! Hold the hold the fuck up. All right, here's why. Final Fantasy XIV has got the best emotes of any MMORPG, hands down. I fuck look, I I can't stress this enough. The fucking emotes in this game are top tier. They're all like perfectly animated. They're they're just they're so they're they're, they're solid. Okay, like it's not just a smiley face. Your character actually does the shit. And it does it well. The animations are fluid. Your character looks at it. And th- there's an emote, I think it costs $10. It's like you play dead. Your character falls down and plays dead. How, it's kind of cute. How, right? how is that? A, I, think, I think the thing is, um, um, and here's the thing. MMORPG players often forget the value of money. Because if you're invested in that game, you'll pay those $5, $10. But $10, $10, like, I think like during like a Steam sale, like $10, $15 gets you like, Skyrim, it gets you like The Witcher, it gets Fucking you like Skyrim. I'm tired of Skyrim. It get it gets like ten bucks. Ten bucks is like a full triple A game. It's like a year old, you know, like two years old on Steam. You can't use that argument though, because Why? yeah, if you wait if you wait enough time, every game ends up on the humble you can buy a hundred games in the humble bundle, you know? Or you buy a thousand indie games dude, for a penny each dude, you know, on G2A. Under What's no that, circumstance. Are you comparing apples to apples, apples I'm, to oranges. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm comparing apples to emos. Okay, that's what I'm comparing it to. You know, one, one nourishes me. One doesn't. Yeah, ten dollars to lie down in a for an emo is never a good deal. Okay, it's never generous. Don't give me this. No, buying a, a full cosmetic outfit for like five bucks, I think is I think is a fair price. You don't have to buy it. It's completely optional. Like I, I, I I've actually, I've only, I think I've only bought one item in the cash of like two dollars personally in my in my over a year of playing Final Fantasy fourteen. But it's optional. You don't have to do it. But it, it's it's nice, you know. And, and what they do is usually what what happens is they usually put a lot of like the there's there's event items for like Valentine's Day where you got this you got different you know the slash dough emote is fucking phenomenal in this game. Like that emote, if you missed it for the if the Valentine's event, you can buy it next year on the mock station. So did they put a lot of content they've released limited time, give it free? So you can get it again. 
So I, I think I think that's fair. I mean, by the way, I'm not you don't have about, to get it. I'm not I'm not I'm not criticizing the the price necessarily or how it's fair or whatever. I'm trying to say that if they go free to play, they open up the the possibilities for a lot more players to participate in this very fair ten dollar emo ecosystem, which for them I also, think is a good deal because you know if you know people like you and people who play the game if they think they're getting a good deal for ten dollar emotes then they should go free to play because then they can they can sell those ten dollar emotes all day long to millions of players you know they can make more money. I think Kenny Ash made a good point though you don't you can't decide what other players decide what their value is because look I play I what? played a lot of league. Right? I, I, I just said I, oh I'm not deciding I'm saying they should go free to play so because obviously they have a mechanism that. People think they're getting a good deal with these ten dollars emotes, so they should go free to play. So more players can pay ten dollars for emotes. No, that's not going to fly though. I, I I don't think that model makes. Look, I, I'm 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 probably the biggest advocate for free to play. I've said so many games should go free to play, but I don't think Final Fantasy XIV will ever go free to play because the Final Fantasy franchise it allows them to charge a premium. If you look at the average revenue per user, ARPU, for for these games, never do they they're never above fifteen dollars. I don't think there's no MMORPG or online game. Free to play game that makes over fifteen dollars per user, but guess what? You have a game like FF14 with a subscription. They do. That's the minimum because that's what you'd pay to play the game, and then they make market transactions on top of that. Games like League, which sell thirty dollars legendary skins, which I see everybody buy, they get like they're like four dollars or like two dollars average revenue per user per month, because so many people play spend nothing. So I, I don't think it's going to bring enough players to compensate for the fact that they've already or. 500,000 players or whatever it is paying $10, $15 a month. The Final Fantasy franchise is, is so is strong enough to keep people paying for a long time. They're not going to mind. They don't mind paying for it. And I, I, I don't think that... Because Final Fantasy 11 is still pay to play. That game has been paid, no, subscription-based for like over 10 years now. It's not going to change either. I, this sounds a lot to me like you don't mind other people's games being free to play but you don't want yours to be tainted no no no, no. I, yes. I said yeah. I, I, no 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 look I, personally ready i would love it why should i pay i i'd rather not pay 15 dollars a month right like as a player i prefer to go free. why not more people would play the game more people would play the game and it, and it would save me money it's a win-win bigger community sh shorter queues save money because I, I don't spend a lot of money in, in video games anyway so i'd save a shit ton of of course as a player fuck yeah why not i have nothing to lose Okay, I'm, so, I'm saying from the company's perspective, it's never going to happen. It's not a good business decision for them. Wh why? I mean, if they crunch numbers, they think it's better. Yeah, God. But I don't think them that, that, Because the average revenue per user numbers for free-to-play games, they have to make up for it in just giant numbers. Yeah. They've already had so many people try their game as well, you know, with the with their level 35 free trial. And they probably already calculated what the churn rates are between how many people even get to level 35. You know, they have the data already. Like, they could already... They, but, they should already know... What percent of those free players even make level thirty-five? Hold up. If not, if if they all make it, it's like holy shit, these guys want to play our game. But they see that so few make it, like wait a minute, if we go free to play, we're just going to sacrifice all this revenue. We, we no, all these free users aren't even getting to level thirty-five. So they can run the numbers very easily today. Omar, Omar, you're making a huge mistake here. I'm, I'm talking about the future, because clearly the free to play would come in the future if they're just talking about it now, right? So eventually, oh, yeah. this I, game... I said like four or five years from now, when if, if the if you know the subscribers go down, or... yeah, 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 so, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. They're not gonna go free to play but tomorrow. You, you, you say we're thinking about it now. They're thinking about it now, but things take years to implement. You know, this isn't like a a one day thing. They open the floodgates. I mean, <laughs> I mean maybe one day, maybe one day. Because after all, I mean, we said this before. I want to emphasize it again. But the the world's most highest revenue generating MMORPG is Dungeon Fighter Online. It makes more money than World of Warcraft. It's earned Dungeon Fighter Online has earned more money than all the Star Wars movies combined, box office sales, and it's just like over six billion dollars, like seven billion dollars. So that game makes a shit ton of money as a free to play game. So free to play games do make money if they have a large enough audience. But I don't think WoW is going to drop its subscription either for a long time. Though that some games are going to hold on to that, that premium subscription model for as long as they can, and I think FF14 will do it for a long time. Seven years from now, five years from now, who knows? But I, I say there's no chance of free to play in the next like. Three years, no chance. I'll give you ten to one odds if you want to bet ten bucks on. No, it. I, I don't know. I don't want to make. I don't. I don't. I'm not really interested in trying to time it, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything inherently c contradictory between Final Fantasy XIV and go and free to play. Like, th it makes as much sense to me as any other game going free to play. No, I'll tell you why. Because look, when you have a a franchise like Final Fantasy, you have players that are much more loyal 
just to the franchise. Because look, look, Final Fantasy, like well, Final Fantasy 15, I think. Sucks, I hate right? to I break it to you, bro. I hate There's to break there. it. I hate to break it to you, but there are huh. already free to play Final Fantasy games. <gasps> Check your phone. Yeah, mobile games. I know. Okay. There are no mobile subscription games. That's why that that model doesn't exist on, on mobile. Are, so you can carry apples to oranges. I'm sure there are mobile subscription games. Can you name one? No, I don't. I don't really play okay, mobile. Games. I, I can. I can barely. I don't play any mobile games at all. So I don't know. But, but I, that, I don't think there are any monthly subscription mobile games. Anyway, the point is, the the Final Fantasy franchise it, it has loyal fans. And okay. I, I, I'm a little less loyal now after Final Fantasy 15. I didn't really like it. I bought it, but I didn't really like it. Like even like. And even 13, I, I enjoy it, but like it really just wasn't as good as some of the older Final Fantasy games. And I'm kind of like, I'm kind of losing that loyalty, right? After playing 13 and 15. So I'm not like a hardcore fan. I have to buy their games, right? But a lot of people just love Final Fantasy. And, and because of that, they can, they can command a premium price that other franchises can't do, can't get away with. I mean, Final Fantasy 11 has proved that. They, they've kept people paying for forever. Plus, the game is really good, too, obviously. I mean, people were playing Final Fantasy 1.0, like the, the OG version, which which objectively sucked. I mean, even the producers, like, holy shit, this game blows. They did, I, I remember playing Final Fantasy 1, 14 1.0 because I did it for MMO back in the day, and I still have my beta email, welcome to the beta. Fucking, I remember just the interface was, was cancer. You launched the game, it looks disgusting. It was like, how do you... I, I didn't want to touch that game after spending an hour with the game's disgusting interface. But, like, people were willing to pay and play that shit because it's Final Fantasy. It was just, it was just bad. I mean, again, you you make, you're making this assumption that somehow the premium uh, subscription model makes more money. When you know, Dungeon Fighter makes a lot more than even WoW. So clearly, it's not a matter I'm, of I said that, it's not a matter of Final Fantasy being a subscription game or not. It's what they think they can make most money as. That's it. Of course. Okay. Th- th- that's all that matters. And yeah. I think that the numbers very clearly will so, point towards for Final Fantasy to be a subscription I, game because I I. I, I, I I don't know. I, you bring up this whole uh, fan base loyalty. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. If they're so loyal, they'll they'll play it when it's free to play and spend fifty dollars on emotes all day long, like and, and get good deal, get good value out of it. Whatever, you know. <laughs> no, because I don't think it would bring too many new people into the game. Because anyone who wants to play the game can get the free trial already. And there's a big there's a pro, there's a big drop off rate between people that play the game they get the max level. I think most of the have that, but I think maybe after fourteen might even have a bit more, because. It, they, they can already look at data with how many people are playing the free trial and, and in the free trial how far they get. If, if they're seeing a lot of people doing the free trial and like actually sticking with the game, that gives them good data on whether they... And if they all if a good percent make it to level 35 there, it kind of tells them, look, there's a big demand for our game on these free-to-play users that aren't converting. Maybe then they can decide. But I, I think they've looked at those numbers... I mean, and, and it's just not gonna I, we both agree if the numbers check out, they'll do it. I think we're yeah, just, spe- of course. We're it's just about money. We're just speculating. I'm free to play as a player, but I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, I think that's I think enough of that. We beat that one to death. Yeah, and should, uh, four point uh, four point one is coming out October tenth, I believe, which is the big update for the game. It's it's a, it's a biggie. It's adding a lot of new shit to the game, a lot of new shit. So I'm, I'm excited for that. A lot of big, you know, Final Fantasy fourteen is very good with content updates. Just giant updates every few months keeps it fresh. That's my shilling for Final all Fantasy. All this right. Week. Speaking of uh. MMORPGs. I want to talk about one I'm going to be playing again in November. Star Wars The Old Republic has finally decided to, to merge servers. This is an issue I've been begging for for a while now. I actually joined one of their discords. I'm not sure if it's official or not, but I joined a discord channel to spam them until they banned me that the Bastion should be merged because it had no players on it and it pissed me off. And I'm not going to... And people were like, well, just pay the transfer, bro. Like, That's the biggest bullshit. That's I, bullshit. I agree. 100% bullshit. Yeah, I I'm paying so I can play your freaking MMORPG with other people. You know that, that that's your job. So anyway, uh, seventeen servers is going all the way down to five. So there will be I believe one server for US East, one for US West, and then three for Europe. French one one French server, one German server, and one English server in Europe. Uh, much much needed. It rolls out I believe in November, early November, and I will November be 8th. and I will be playing the game because of this. Uh, so they, they will at least have one player for a bit. And I'm sure there's a lot of new content to check. And what I love about this game is it's free to play, but it's almost like an unlimited trial. You only get two character slots, which whatever, you know. Um, there's a few big restrictions. They but limit your hot bars, don't, don't they? No, no, no. They did when they first launched that. Then they, they added more okay. hot bars. Yeah. That's kind of sketch. That's why. Limiting your hot bars is what the fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, I, I, think, I think overall they're making good money from this game. Um 
it kind of flopped when it first came out. I remember it went from like 100 servers down to like 20 in like two months or something. And mm -hmm. I, I played this game at launch. Actually, I played before launch, like don't open beta and all that. I, I had a really good time with Star Wars The Old Republic. I kind of fell off after I hit max level. Never really returned to it in full force. I know we played it once for Sunday Fun mm -hmm. Day or whatever. And we did like one dungeon. But unfortunately, it went down the same route as so many games by making the dungeons basically brain dead easy. I remember... Um, at one point, we had an NPC healer, and him mm -hmm. alone could keep us alive at the final boss of the first dungeon forever. Like, if we just went AFK, we couldn't die. Yeah, we can't die. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. I know people say I play for the story, but you, the story has more meaning, too, if the, if, the, if the fights are at least a little bit challenging. You know, otherwise, otherwise, I'll just read a book. You know, like, what the whole point of the game is gameplay with story. No, th that's the thing. Every game has gone that route, though. Yeah. I mean, Final Fantasy 2, you know, the, the default story modes are brain that easy. They're made to be brain that easy. And then if you want to do some challenging content, I mean, Star Wars World Republic has challenging content, but you have to do the specific mm -hmm. cues for the challenging content. You have to, you know, you have to, you have to do the savage run. You got to do the, the difficult content if you want to experience it. Otherwise, the default stuff is going to be brain that easy. And it's, it's, it's just the storytelling. It's, it's there for the storytelling and learning your character. Uh, but maybe, as you, always, as you always say, too, maybe like, the average gamer, remember, if your 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 average gamer is way lower than my average gamer, so maybe for the average gamer it's difficult. Who knows? I would say from what I see, what I saw of the later stuff in in Final Fantasy, I think it's still possible to die in the story mode. I mean, in, the, yeah. in Star Wars, I mean, you literally couldn't die if you wanted to. Like, you could not find a way to die in that boss fight. I think we yeah we we point that in our video. I think it was pretty funny. Yeah, I think if you, you sit down, AFK and you just yeah, die. if you if you like take your armor off and sit down over and over again, maybe I don't even then I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But, uh, also, I mean, because of all my shit on Final Fantasy, I get shit on that again for, for I get shit on the game for a moment because I can I cannot agree with you more on this bullshit of paying money to, to transfer servers. Like, Chaos Shield wants to play Final Fantasy fourteen with 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 me, but he can't because I'm on Gilgamesh and he cannot make a character on Gilgamesh, which is the populated server. If you're playing on in North America, you you want to play on Gilgamesh or um or Balmung, the two busiest Balmung. servers, and, and you can't make characters on those because they're full. So you have to actually. And actually, at this moment, you can't even transfer to them because they're so full, they don't even want your money to transfer to them. But when I when I made my character, I couldn't make a character there either. Over a year ago, you couldn't make, you're not allowed to make a character. But I was able to make a character on a bullshit server and then pay the... It was like $25. <laughs> Something stupid. 20, and that's more than the fucking game. You could buy Heaven's Ward and the base game for 20 bucks on sale. or And then I had to pay an extra 20 bucks on top of that bullshit to transfer my character to, to Gilgamesh, the server my friends were on. So, I mean, I ate it, right? I paid 20 bucks and I feel like I got ripped off. 100%. It's such a such a douchebag move. I mean, if your server's too full, fucking add more capacity to it. It, it makes no sense. It makes not one iota of sense because, oh, the housing districts are limited. There's a reason to have... No, shut the fuck up. This doesn't make any sense because you can just add more fucking instances to it. All the all the places with, like, housing plots, which are, you know, limited quantity, they already have freaking districts. They have channels in them already. Just add a couple more channels. Problem solved. And, and, and the world PV is never full. The, the world, the, the maps outside the towers are always fucking empty anyway. It never made sense. It, it's the dumbest thing. The fact that people aren't riding over this on the fucking community and they're just taking it up the ass from Square Enix, it's just, it's bad. We gotta get, we gotta get the pitchforks out there because it, it really is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. The, I mean, games like Black Desert Online figure this shit out like right away. They have fucking, you can change channels between regions if you want to. There's one global server, you just change channels between them, and it just works. And Final Fantasy XIV just, just doesn't let you play with your friends unless you pay like 20 bucks. Makes no sense, and there's no design rationale behind it either. The, here's the it's problem. It's frustrating. Here's the problem. The fact it's Japanese and made for consoles, right? PS3. I really don't PS4. think... Well, it was made for PS3 in mine, original game. They, I don't think Japanese developers have the competence level to do these kind of mergers and handle the sauce. Let's take the, the back end stuff well. Isn't the website still Square trash? Enix is a four point eight billion dollar company. If you can be a ten trillion dollar out, company. They could they could just pay some fucking Russian programmer yeah, 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 yeah. ten million dollars to do it for them. Whatever yeah. it takes. Well, they, yeah, if they, if they get outside help, they could do it. But I don't think they but have the. They, can, they don't have the. There are, there they don't have the technical prowess to do it themselves. I don't know. I don't, I don't I, They don't have the will to do it right now. But I think I think if if people demanded it, people are too complacent too. I feel like people give. Because remember, I said because Final Fantasy is a lot of hardcore fans, Square Enix gets a lot of free passes. A lot of, and this is outside of Final Fantasy 14, Final Fantasy 15, 13. The franchise gets so many free passes for bullshit. It's like people 
the fanboys defend it to hell, and the fanboys don't criticize it. It's like they can do no wrong. So I think in that regards, that's one of the reasons that it, it, these things don't change either. Indeed. <laughs> Easy Mac left us a brilliant comment. The sushi is stronger than the strongest pigskin steel. Nice. All right. Well, any any other stories we have to cover before our time runs out? We got we got we got ten minutes left. Give us a news dump. A news dump. I don't know. We got the, we got the exciting stuff out of the way. Again, I'm I'm hyped for Final Fantasy uh, four point one. Beyond that, we, oh, we got we got to mention the Resident Mobile news. We got to bring up one bit of mobile news. It's it's been a pretty quiet week actually. I mean, there's nothing really too big. But really, the the big mobile news is that Blizzard is oh. hiring yeah, yeah, for yeah. an unannounced mobile MMORTS. This actually, you know, this is it's Blizzard. They're finally making a mobile game. This is the first mobile game they've ever made. I believe mainline online mobile game Blizzard's making. Activision Blizzard owns King, which has a bunch of bullshit mobile games, but not developed by Blizzard. So the fact that Blizzard's making this, it's a big deal. Yeah, and I think I think this will do really well. Uh, Let's speculate what we think it is, guys. I'm going to I'm going to go and say it's going to be Warcraft Heroes of Warcraft. So it's going to be like Clash of Clans. Like you make a little base. It takes like five minutes mm-hmm. to build a little hut and then like 10 minutes to build the, the next building. And then you just do that bullshit. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, in our, I, wrote, I, I slapped this up earlier and I said if I had to guess it would be Warcraft franchise because I think fantasy lends itself well to this kind of strategy game of war style game. Most of these games are, are fantasy based already. And, you know, given that Game of War and Clash of Clans make about a billion dollars each a year, that's more money than, like, World of Warcraft, by the way. World of Warcraft makes about $800 million a year. But fucking Clash of Clans makes more than World of Warcraft. Like, of course Blizzard is going to make a Clash of Clans clone. Like, why wouldn't they? The fucking flagship game that, like, we all know as people that play MMOs, most, we all know fucking World of Warcraft, we all know Prince Money, but Clash of Clans makes more money than World of Warcraft. Of course they're going to make a fucking, you know, knockoff of that, too. But they have a, you know... The Warcraft franchise is, I think, powerful. That there's a chance it can dethrone Game of War or Clash of Clans, and I'm hoping that because Blizzard is making this game, I'm, I have faith that Blizzard is not going to make their game so unbelievably pay to win the way that Game of War is, the way that Strike, um, that fucking Clash of Clans is, and the way that most of these fucking Vikings game, there's a Rome game, there's so many of these mobile games that are strategy games, they're all garbage pay to win. You can literally spend tens of thousands of dollars on these games. I'm hoping Blizzard has a little more tame approach. I, I honestly think a game like Clash of Clans, a game of war, that doesn't have pay-to-win elements could be fucking amazing. I used to play these games on the PC. I played the browser version. I played Astro Empires. That was one of the OG Clash of Clans style games on the browser. It was the OG Ebony. And it was it was fun. But you could just pay to win anyway, so it fucking ruined it. But I think these games would be amazing if they weren't pay to win. I'm hoping Blizzard does a pretty good. Job. I'm hoping Blizzard does a good job with it, and I think they they might. They might not go fully pay to win. Even if they go twenty percent there, I'll be happy. Um, oh, well, we do know it's going to be based on Unity because that that is in the job description, yep. guys. So if you guys are seeing this, maybe you want to apply for a job at Blizzard. We'll see. You have to have excellent verbal and written communication skills. Well, and fluent in C. Yeah. C hashtag. C sharp. Is the official word there? It's actually a hashtag. Is it is it a hashtag or a pound sign? Uh, did did pound sign get replaced by hashtag? Or are they the same? And on the phones, you called them pound signs. I I don't know what the official. I in music, I think it's a sharp something sharp. Sharp hashtags pounds. What is it? But yeah, this this game is gonna make a lot of money and and. You know what's also unbelievable? That that disgusting mobile strategy game. The disgusting fucking mobile game. I did a video for it too. Yeah, Final here. Fantasy 15, A New Kingdom, A New Empire, right? Oh, I it's thought it's such a bad game. Oh, I thought franchise was so important, and the fans, well, they're milking the shit out of Final Fantasy. Of course yeah, they are. It's nothing but another, you know, milk well, cow. I, I, I did. I didn't say that like Final Fantasy as a franchise is fucking beautiful. I said people view it that way. They have hardcore fans, which will throw money and defend them in every every angle. I'm not one of those people. I fucking shit on mm-hmm. a lot of decisions. And Final Fantasy 15, I didn't like the mainline game. The fucking mobile strategy game is garbage. It's literally a reskin version of Game of War. Link my video on YouTube for this because I, this game is, is god awful. But the thing is, I was looking at the App Store earlier today, and it's like the 20th highest grossing game in America. How the fuck is this game 
the 20th highest grossing game in America. It's so bad. And it's nothing. It's literally the same game as Game of War. I mean, like you. I mean, like you. This nonsense. At least they have a really hot model as their like spokesperson. She's an Instagram model, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look at this game. It's 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 awful. It's the same exact mobile strategy garbage. It's literally reskin Game of War. It's the same exact game, just reskin. And there's really no Final Fantasy elements to it besides like some of the item names and the character names. But this is the 20th highest grossing game in America right now. Why? Because I don't know. It, it, it's not the gameplay. It's not fucking original. It's, it's literally the same game. Like if it was slightly different, that's fine. No, it's the same exact game. Literally reskin. I see no difference between paying for this and paying for $10 emotes. No, nope, I'll get putting the emotes. It, putting I'll it out the, there. It, the emotes in Final Fantasy fourteen are fucking beautiful. But oh uh, honestly, some of the like the bad like, it's word why words cannot describe how great the emotes are in Final Fantasy fourteen. Alright. I log into Final Fantasy fourteen, I spam some cute fucking emotes, and it makes me happy, alright? It's it's something else. The emotes <laughs> in that game are top tier. You know what makes me happy? Ten dollars makes me happy. I never spent I, I never I never paid money for I spent like two dollars <laughs> on an optional cash shop. It wasn't it wasn't for an emote, it was for an outfit. And that was it. For, I, I, but the emotes. If I if I missed some of the emotes, like the Valentine's Day emote slash dough, it's fucking cute as hell. If I missed that shit, I'd pay for it. But I already have it, so I don't have to pay for it. But it's the emotes in that game are top tier. All right. I have no problem paying for ten dollars good emotes personally. But I've yet to do it. But if I see a really good emote, I could I could see myself paying ten dollars for it. And yeah, it's ten dollars to spend on something to enhance something you love. I mean. No. I, you, I see people spending thirty bucks on on leak skins, but whatever. It's their money. It gives them gives them joy. It's no worse than, you know, if you spend thirty dollars on a leak skin or ten dollars on an emote, or you spend ten dollars drinking a Bud Light at a fucking bar. How is that any different? Hold up, hold up. The people who say stuff like this, oh, everything is the same. The value is depending on you. They, 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 a lot of these people, not everyone, they turn around and they shit on other people for doing the exact same thing. What if I want to spend ten thousand dollars on Clash of Clans? Why is that a scam or a ripoff? Or stupid, but but when you spend ten dollars, well, I, on... I, I didn't say it was stupid. I said the I said the game is the exact same, and the game sucks. I didn't say. Oh no, it's and, good. It's value. It makes me win. happy. I, I, yeah, these are objective statements. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Well, we can discuss that further in the post game. I'm gonna really rip on these emotes, a little guys. Sorry about that, right. but we're gonna save it for the post game here. All right, Thanks I for watching. Because I fucking love the emotes. Final Fantasy 14. Thanks for watching. Later for YouTube. Yep. See you next week. Maybe.